Today I'm going to be explaining all the different types of Air Jordan 4s. Not just colorways, but the types. For example, you got Flyknit, you got Fusion, you got OGs, you got Retros, you got New Cuts, you got SBs. I'm going to break it all down for you. There's almost 20 different types of Air Jordan 4s and probably about 100 different colorways. So recently I showed my 2006 Air Jordan 4 Military Blues and everybody thought the shoe was fake because the nets are vertical. There have been a ton of new sneakerheads coming into the game glorifying the Black Cat Air Jordan 4s and as you can see on these, the nets are actually diagonal. Diagonal. So every time when I post something about an older pair of Jordan 4s, all I see in the comment section is Those are ripped. Those shoes are fake. Oh, bro, you got scammed. Nah, bro, I didn't get scammed. The shoes aren't fake. There's just differences between different eras and models of Jordan 4s. Oh, yeah, and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ, and this is the DNA Show. Hey! So what we're gonna do is start with the original Air Jordan 4 from 1989, and then we're gonna go over all the Air Jordan 4s that came out after that every year from then to now. Back in 1989, the original Air Jordan 4 came out and we saw four different colorways, the military blue, the white cement, the black cement, and the fire red. And still to this day, those four colorways might be some of the most iconic Air Jordan 4s to ever hit the streets. Even more important than the Cause 4s or the Dornbecker 4s or other great collaborations, these shoes are nice, but it wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for the OG 4s. So after that, there was a 10 year period where we didn't see any more Air Jordan 4s come out. And then we finally saw a retro of the Jordan 4 and that came out in 1999. Now I don't have the original pair in my collection, but with all the images that we will be popping up in these videos, you you will see that there are some similarities but definitely some differences as well when it comes to the OG and the first set of retros. But one thing that everybody loved about the 99 pair as well, the styles, cuts, and materials were great but it had the Nike Air on the back just like the OG. Now alongside with the white cements and the black cements coming out again, we also saw retro plus colorways like the Oreos and the Columbias. Jordan brand had recently just became its own entity a few years before, so they started to release sneakers with the Jumpman logo on the back end compared to the Nike Air and use their own branding. This has always been a love-hate debate for sneakerheads for many a years now, but personally I like it because it does help separate and identify a OG colorway compared to a retro colorway that's a little bit different than what we originally saw. Now in 2004, we saw a big switch up when it came to the shape of Air Jordan 4s and we saw a lot slimmer cut of the sneaker. So if you look at this image right here of a 99 pair compared to a 2004 pair, you can see that the shape is a lot more sleek around the toe and they made the shoe a lot slimmer throughout the entire foot. We also saw a transition in the netting. This is where you see the net on the side of the foot now is vertical on the shoe compared to the diagonal nets that we saw in the previous releases. Now I'm sure all my OG heads out there remember the Cool Gray 4s. That was an amazing release and one of the sneakers that I used to I have in my collection and loved wearing. Luckily, they came out with a retro because the shoe started to crumble, which we'll talk about in a second. But shoes that are that old when it comes to Jordan 4s, they just have a tough time lasting for 20 plus years. Prime example, if you look at my 1999 Air Jordan 4s, I still decided to keep these in my collection, but these things are definitely not wearable. Now, following the 2004 era, we had the 2005 era, which changed a lot of things in the game. Honestly, is one of the major roots to all the madness now when it comes to these crazy expensive prices for Air Jordan 4 samples. Jordan Brand and Undefeated did a collaboration and this actually was the first ever collaboration for Jordan 4s and I think still to this day might be one of the greatest collaborations of all time. On June 23rd, 2005, they did a release of 72 pairs of the Undefeated Jordan 4s and these things cracked the internet even though the internet wasn't a huge thing back then. Trust me, everybody was talking about these in the shoe game at the time. And honestly, I could say more of a mythical thing in the streets, but either way, like I said, this still had to be one of the greatest collaborations of all time because this shoe has definitely done a lot for the sneaker culture and the price reflects that. If you're looking to buy a pair of undefeated fours, you're going to be spending anywhere from thirty dollars to $40,000 for a single pair of these shoes. What? Now I know that price is crazy, but there's another shoe that came out around the same time and it actually didn't really release. It was more a friends and family type thing. The Encore M&M Air Jordan 4s. The blue joints. Oh my gosh. Again, another grail. This was like the first ever collaboration with an artist and everybody was going crazy about this shoe, trying to figure out how to get their hands on it and at the time five to eight thousand dollars for that pair of shoes was crazy just way expensive at the time but again you look at current market thirty to forty thousand dollars for those as well uh, i'm out man I'm Strip. Now following that in 2006, we had the LS series hit the streets. We saw this in other models as well, but for the Jordan 4s, one of the most iconic ones that everybody wants to see retro, the Mist Air Jordan 4s. Now as you can see looking at these compared to the Cool Gray 4s, they definitely hold a very similar in shape and style when it comes to the overall look of these two shoes. But for those that don't know, LS is actually lifestyle. So Jordan brand wanted to create a lifestyle brand out of their sneakers as well, using the same retros, but allowing you to incorporate it into your everyday 
life and wearing it with outfits compared to just on the basketball court, creating an off the basketball court environment as well. And I'm telling you right now, the early 2000s was definitely an era where you saw a lot of people wearing J's just in their normal everyday life. Now to go alongside with the missed Air Jordan 4s, we had another crazy banger that I wanna see hit the streets again, and that is the Sand Air Jordan 4s. Now I don't know, you gotta correct me if I'm wrong, but it, based off of my memory during that era, I'm pretty sure that was one of the first women's Air Jordan 4s to ever hit the streets. So in 2006, not only was Jordan Brand trying to attract a different audience with people wearing sneakers off the court, they were also tapping into the women's releases as well and introducing that on the Air Jordan 4 with special unique colorways. Now 2008 rolls around and the CDP packs were hot. We all remember the 4s that came out in that drop. Yeah, my pair's a little bit cooked. <laughs> I used to rock these a lot back in the day. But not only do we remember the era of the CDP packs, we had the Jordan 4 Fusions that came out as well. They did a collaboration with Nike Air Force One on multiple different models, but one of them happened to be the Air Jordan 4 and the Fusion Air Force One. Drop a comment down below and let me know if you had some Fusions in your collections before. I ain't gonna lie, I had some Fusions. It wasn't the 4s, but I definitely had a couple Fusions. You remember the ice blue 12s? Those used to go crazy, I don't know, I used to like those. So a few years go by and people are kind of starting to put the Jordan 4 down to the side a little bit because the Jordan 11s are coming out with new releases every holiday and it's starting to attract a lot of attention and kind of deterring people a little bit. But in 2012, we saw the retro of the Black Cement Air Jordan 4, also known to the newer era sneakerheads as the Bread Air Jordan 4, release again. But this time, like we saw in the 2008, these also had the Jumpman on the back compared to the Nike Air. This was something that a lot of sneakerheads weren't really a fan of but at the same time they all knew for a fact they were still gonna buy the shoe so in this 2012 retro we saw the same vertical nets like we have been seeing over the past you know eight years so far but one thing that happened was they actually changed the shape of the shoe so yes these do still have that slimmer look to it if you put them side by side with the older retro, you can definitely tell the difference between the two. And another fan favorite sneaker that retroed in 2012, the Thunder Air Jordan 4s, which we plan on seeing coming out again soon, and everybody's looking forward to that. So I wanted to mention that because the new Thunders that are coming out will actually be the third total pair. We had the OG, the retro in 2012, and now 2023. So in 2015, there was definitely another great addition to the fleet of Air Jordan 4s, but we gotta take it back a little bit because I forgot to mention something soul swaps like i said earlier the 1999 or even og air jordan retros in general but the 1999 air jordan 4 in particular they started to crumble on people as it got closer to 2010 2012 2008 2005 some people they just didn't know how to store the sneakers there wasn't as much education out there and because of that the foam started to fall apart and the shoes started to crumble next thing you know people started replacing the soles and the midsoles on the shoes and calling it sole swaps. I vividly remember that era of like the 2006 to 2010 time when everybody was doing sole swaps and they were trying to find donor sneakers to relive the OG vibes to have that Nike Air on the back of their sneakers and all those different moments. Me personally, I wasn't too into it. I was just like, if I can find a wearable pair type situation or if I got mine and they're not wearable, I think it's kind of cool for nostalgia. But either way, we had to mention sole swaps because I don't know if it all started with Air Jordan 4s, but I definitely remember a lot of people doing it specifically on Air Jordan 4s, and then obviously 3s and 5s and different models like that. But at the same time, the Jordan 4 in particular, like I said, definitely heavily soul swapped from 2006 to 2012. Okay, so back to 2015. This is where the LS series came back to life, but it was kind of interesting because they call it the LS, but originally it was a Retro Plus. And it had a little plus sign on the shoe box. It literally said Retro Plus, but then now it's the LS series, but it's the same shoe. The Columbias and Oreos came out again as retros, but they decided to brand it a little bit different and call them Legend Blues compared to Columbias like the OGs used to call it, but it was damn near the same exact shoe. And then the Oreos, the materials weren't as nice as the OG version, but everybody still loved them at the same time. And I still be rocking my pair. I got rid of my OGs. They weren't wearable anymore, so I'm still a happy camper either way. Like I said earlier, it definitely does make things a little bit harder if you wanna be an Air Jordan 4 collector because these shoes do fall apart 10, 15 years, they start to fall apart. You gotta make sure that you take proper care of the sneakers and all those different things, which I have a video about. We'll talk about that later. But either way, I just wanted to note that for you guys because I used to have a lot of great Jordan 4s. I had to get rid of them because they're just no longer wearable. Now, also in 2015, not only did we see the LS series come back to life in a different way, we also saw a cleat and spike version of the Air Jordan 4 hit the streets at a retail option. There was both a rubber cleat and a baseball spike that hit the streets. I got the red rubber cleats. I don't know where they're at. They're somewhere in the room, but 
but either way I still have those I never really wore them I just kind of got them just because it was like retail wasn't that high I think it was like 130 bucks or something like that nothing crazy and then at the same time it was like dope to see that they brought this out as a spike now if you look at these compared to other retros you can definitely see obviously the bottom is different but the overall upper and the shape the materials a lot more different compared to your normal basketball shoe version now following those releases we saw the 2016 drops and those were hitting for crazy retail price points of $400 this was called the premium pack of the Air Jordan 4s we saw different leather styles cuts and materials when it came to these models every single one of these drops was really high quality now I can't move on to the next year without mentioning this the slanted nets were introduced as you can see right here this is the white cement Air Jordan 4 and it had the Nike Air on the back in 2016 sneakerheads went crazy because we had the OG color with the Nike Air and everybody loved it and because of that sneakers like this hold a crazy value next thing you know they're worth seven eight nine hundred dollars so not only did we get that Nike Air reintroduced we also got the slanted nets bringing back that OG vibe like we originally saw back in the day so now in 2017 18 and 19 this was a very spooky time now I'm sure you're probably wondering why am I saying that because the game really started to change we saw Wahlburgers M&Ms undefeated both being re retroed uh, Travis Scott purple brown all the different stuff sneakerheads were starting to really fall in love with the Jordan 4s again and the samples and PEs is what really drove the hype and the demand behind this which then caused people to want the GRs because that was what they could afford and actually obtain which we'll talk about a little bit later but during that time it was crazy to say the least we also had options of collaborations like Levi's or like the Drake Raptor 4s that were actually available to the consumers and definitely drew a high demand behind those as well they sold out instantly the price immediately shot up and kept going up over time especially saying now that Jordan 4s are potentially at the all-time high for example sneakers like the Drake 4s those are you know a few hundred bucks now they're like six seven hundred dollars or if you look at the Levi's Air Jordan 4s, five, six hundred bucks, now they're like nine hundred to a thousand dollars. And trust me, I could go case by case with so many different sneakers, but those are just a couple examples for you guys. Also, for those that didn't know, Jordan brand called these specific releases NRG releases. They did this with other Jordan models as well, but NRG actually means energy. So what they try to do is do a special hyped up collab or some type of cool special colorway that has a more limited release, call it an energy drop. And that is something that creates energy around the brand, around the model and creates more relevancy in the sneaker community. So when you see NRG next to a sneaker like that, that's what it is based off of the branding and what it represents to the company and then what it did to the community as well and how they decided to title the shoe. Now next up in 2019, don't take this as any disrespect, this is just my opinion, but there was a huge flop and that was the Air Jordan 4 Flyknit. Bro, come on, oh my gosh, I can't do it. I get it, they might be comfortable, but the neon colors, maybe if it was something a little bit more toned down, maybe we would have had a chance of me liking it. But either way, Jordan Brand introduced the Flyknit series onto the Air Jordan 1. We saw that, it had a little bit of hype, but those didn't really even sell out that well. And then the Jordan, honestly, those sat on shelves after I think about it. But then the Jordan 4 also came into the scene and we saw different colorways on the Jordan 4s in the Flyknit series. And honestly, yeah. That didn't do too well. So now 2020 rolls around and the pandemic comes and what happens? We have a huge, and I mean huge, influx of sneakerheads coming into the game. Sneakerheads, resellers, hype beasts, you name it, all the different titles. Everybody was just coming into the game trying to be into this stuff, be into this world. And during this time, we saw a new cut of the Air Jordan 4 get introduced, but it was actually like the OG style from 1989 and probably one of the best created versions since the OG release. And no better way to do it than with the fire red Air Jordan 4s with the Nike Air on the back in the OG cut. They did an amazing job on this shoe when it comes to the style's cuts. Materials were solid and quality control. Some people had some issues on this shoe in particular. Also in 2020, we saw the black cat air jordan 4s come out if you look at the previous og or i can't say og but first release from back in the day compared to the new retro version now you can see the cuts are completely different and the shape is way different when it comes to those two shoes and it was actually kind of surprising because the black cats they low-key didn't even sell out like not many people were going crazy for these at the time people were being a little bit more cautious with their money and i understand that but what's crazy to think now in 2023 this shoe is almost a thousand dollars people are going wild for this shoe 
Times have definitely changed to say the least. Also, I forgot to mention the nets on the OG cut aren't backed with an adhesive. So that means it's more true to the OG form. And this is honestly a really dope touch. So following that in 2021, we then saw the Jordan 4 golf spikes get introduced. And we saw honestly a lot of different Jordan models get introduced with golf spikes on the bottoms over the past few years. But the Jordan 4 in particular, people were super excited about it because they had OG colorways and then special colorways as well. And everybody loves rocking some OGs on and off the court. But now you can actually wear them on the golf course as well now during this time there was a lot of fan favorites when it comes to some of the other releases that people saw like unc's psg's lightnings or unions trust me there's a lot of other great ones i got here in the room but either way what i'm saying is we have seen a lot of hype and demand over jordan fours and there have been a lot of dope colorways that have come out that people have really been gassing up as well and one of the biggest roots that a lot of people think is to all this madness behind jordan fours is the Jordan 1s, they were on top of the game. Everybody was loving them. They had their run, and people started to try to look for a new model. And then people on TikTok, they started to post more and more and more about Jordan 4s. And then obviously, Jordan brand was releasing some great colorways. So the mixture between all these different things, the promotion behind TikTok, new sneakerheads coming into the game, trying to find the new latest, greatest, trendy sneakers, what are they gonna do? They're gonna attach onto what everybody's talking about, the Air Jordan 4. So for the past two years, we have seen a crazy, and I mean crazy, influx of more new sneakerheads, more new hype, and an even bigger demand behind the Air Jordan 4, potentially the biggest demand that we've ever seen behind the Air Jordan 4 in current time. So now in 2023, we have the Air Jordan 4 SB. Those recently came out and they literally caused a ruckus everybody on the internet was going crazy the campouts were wild as you see all the stuff that's popped up on the news or the different things going on in each and every person's city there has been a crazy hype crazy demand not only because jordan 4 had done their first ever collaboration with sbs but sbs have been on fire and jordan 4s are on fire and because of that it created the ultimate love child with an amazing colorway a dope gum bottom and everybody loves it and now in current time we have seen all these crazy styles cuts iterations models you name it and the jordan 4 game is at a space that i have never ever over all these years seen it be at before so before we end this video we got to talk about collaborations pe's and different things like that as well because you know i love talking about those and they had a huge impact on the jordan 4 in particular like i showed you we had different collaborations like union cost amam Year, dornbecker psg travis scott ovo and plenty more so when it comes to the pe's also known as player exclusives or player additions we saw crazy things like i said travis scott eminem undefeated different things like that but the college series also started to get involved when it came to the fours so we saw a whole set of college series air jordan fours from all the jordan brand sponsored schools which created a crazy demand next thing you know all those shoes range from anywhere from six to nine thousand dollars some people are asking ten thousand dollars plus depending on the size of the shoe but which again was at the right place at the right time which caused a crazy demand and next thing you know everybody loved the shoe and they start gassing it up they could potentially be twenty thousand dollar shoes in the future who knows we also have a huge huge set of amazing Jordan 4 samples that we have seen drop over the past 15 years now and they're all ranging from 10 to $40,000 and there's some collectors in this world that only want to collect Air Jordan 4s in particular that have been doing it for many years before the hype but either way the Jordan 4 has been one of the greatest collaborated models out of all the models we've seen different PEs from Jordan 3s and 11s and 8s and different stuff like that but for some reason if you get an Air Jordan 4 collaboration that's like the ultimate goal, the ultimate grail. And you definitely see that reflecting through the sample and PE community. So this video was filled with a ton of information. If you need to watch this back, please do. Share it to your friends as well. And I know there's a couple things that got missed out on there when it comes to the design elements and some of the history and all those different things. So I'd love to hear you guys represent that down below in the comment section on all the things that you love to hear and all the things that may be some other cool fun facts that may not have got spoken about. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this explains as much as possible if you want to see this on different models of sneakers or any other type of explained videos let me know down below in the comment section and i'll make sure i give you guys a good breakdown i would never let you down yo before you go i just launched my sneakerhead academy where we got everything on the inside i teach you all the stuff that i learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers scaling real estate you name it we talk about all of it in there and there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways i give away shoes literally way too much honestly but either way i'll see you guys on the inside hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy and I'll see you guys over there. If you made it to the end of this video, let me know 
down below in the comment section, what are your top three, this is gonna be hard, your top three Air Jordan 4 colorways of all time? <laughs> Good luck on that one. Like to make what I'm aware today. One of those. One I would never let you down. It's in my DNA. The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. I was made for 